Hi guys, my apologies for the audio if it sounds crackled or quiet, so I'm speaking extra loud and with extra clarity so that people can hear what I'm saying. Hurricane Florence we have been looking at for about two weeks now, way before the mainstream media was picking up on it. We tracked its trajectory to the East Coast. At first it was looking at New York, now it's looking at South Carolina. Um, obviously you're going to hear a lot about this hurricane over the next coming days. It's due to really be at the East Coast around the 13th of September, which is a date that we've looked at in terms of uh, a number of things possibly happening around that time. The first red heifer. I want to talk about this. It is, so just very quickly, the red heifer, also known as the red cow, was a cow brought to priests for sacrifice in the Hebrew Bible. Jewish and Christian fundamentalists, I won't ignore that word, believe that once a red heifer is born, they will be able to rebuild the third temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. But in order to do this, they would have to demolish what stands on the hill today, the Dome of the Rock, an Islamic holy temple. Now, when now from what I can gather from the interpretation, after the United States has had its, you know, hurricane and tsunami potential EMP, stuff like that, this looks like on the 15th of September is when things kick off in the Middle East. Now, Russia, Syria, Turkey... The United States, the UK, Germany, they're all waiting to begin this offensive in Iran, um, in Syria, in Idlib, this northeastern part of Syria where the final war is to begin. Now, people are warning that there could be potentially a lot of casualties. In my mind, the 10,000 um, number comes back to my mind from the IPEC GOAT 2 video. So, in mainstream Orthodox Judaism, once the temple is rebuilt, the world will welcome the coming of the Jewish Messiah. Humanity will then face the last judgment. Everyone who has moral, who has morally and believed in God, I'm not sure exactly how that sentence should be read, everyone who was, sorry, was moral and believed in God will have the privilege of having their name written in the book of life. Everyone whose name isn't in there will be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 21, chapter 8. Revelation 21, chapter 21, verse 8. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with me at the moment. Very tired, I think. Um, at the moment, this is a partial video because I have over a thousand reports, or at least I had over a thousand reports to go through. The last couple of days have been really hectic. I've been looking after my grandfather who um, has become sick, so I haven't had much time to do what I do. Um, I'm down to 641 reports, so it's pretty good. Um, I've spent the last, I don't know, three or four hours going through them, um, and I've still got 641 to go, so most likely there'll be another video later on today, but everything that I'd already found was so compelling i thought you know yeah let me just do this in two parts or three parts if i have to do it that way just to cover everything that i haven't been able to cover in the last couple of days so this red heifer is a potential sign of the end times and look at the time that we're in right now everything hurricanes approaching the east coast hurricanes approaching hawaii the potential for emps the clashing over in syria the problems in the white house everything is coming up in september wake me up when september ends now they are still checking to make sure that this calf, this red heifer that's been born, is fully red. Any blemishes, and it won't be the red heifer that people are, are talking about. But as as far as it stands, it is the red heifer. So it kind of is a a signal for the end times. On well, I say the end times. We've got the end times spans a, a couple of years. So I say the beginning of what we would call the end times. Now. Obviously, with all that going on, we've got the Tower of Voices uh, memorial due to be uh, celebrated or this sacrifice, this ritual is due to uh, happen tomorrow. Uh, Donald Trump will be there. Um, at the same time, we've got all these other things going on. So that brings me on to Weather Watch. Now, this is the 13th of September. As you'll notice, there are potentially four hurricanes in the Atlantic at this time. We've got Hurricane Florence over by the East Coast approaching the North and South Carolinas. They have declared a state of emergency. I would suggest, as you can see how big this hurricane is and how its wind is pretty much sweeping the entire East Coast, I would say everybody on the East Coast should be wary, especially, especially if you live on the coast. You'll be looking out for flooding, storm surges, stuff like that. And obviously the other things we talked about in terms of a large earthquake uh, or potential blackout or something like that happening is also on the cards. Down here, you've got Hurricane Helena or Helene. Um, that will be tracking towards uh, Puerto Rico, as mentioned. Hurricane Florence meaning to blossom. Uh, Hurricane Helene meaning light or torch. 
Then over here we've got Hurricane Isaac. Um, Hurricane Isaac is a funny storm. It moves north and uh, does some circles um, when it gets up to around here. It starts kind of circling around. So I find it curious. Oh, it's circling the other way as well. It's not even going that way. It's going the opposite direction, which is really weird. Um, Geoengineering, that's all I can think of that. Um, all the hurricanes I've watched thus far, their, their paths don't really take them straight up north. They're kind of always moving in a more westerly direction. This one kind of steam, seems to be staying on the east side of the Atlantic and kind of moving around in an anti-clockwise fashion, um, which is obviously normal for the hurricane to move in an anti-clockwise fashion when it's uh, circling around. But um, at the same time, definitely something to watch. Here we have Hurricane Joyce. Hurricane Joyce has not formed yet. Um, it won't, may not be a hurricane. It looks like it may just be a tropical storm um, as Hurricane Isaac comes into its vicinity. Uh, it starts to kind of dissipate. But the name, again, with all these hurricanes, they've all got significant names and they all seem to connect together. The name Joyce is a contemporary given name used for females and rarely used for males. As a family name, it is derived from the old French masculine name Jose, which derived from the Latin name Lodocus, the Latinized form of Breton name Judoc, meaning Lord. So basically, Joyce means Lord. Now, obviously, we've got the whole blooming and the reference to light, uh, which kind of just points you towards the illuminated one, which is the Antichrist, the devil, the serpent, on that side of things. Um, and then you've got the hurricane uh, that they have referenced, which breaks down to Lord. Um, definitely, they are using the hurricane names to convey a message of the Antichrist coming forward. Now, that's going to span over the next week or the next two weeks, depending on whether the interpretation uh, pans out up to the 15th and then onwards. Um, looking up to the 23rd, because 23 is definitely referenced in the iPad Goat video. It could be a representation of 11, or you could add it together and get five, um, which again, is another watch date I've got later on. After September passes, October the 31st to November the 5th, that covers Halloween, uh, fireworks night, and it's just before the midterm election. So a really, really important time, um, if anything is going to happen. Then we've got um, the, well, first I will just mention, oh, do I have to register? Well, let me just turn off ad block on one second. So we've got the fact that the United States has uh, just kind of closed one of its uh, Palestinian I can't remember what the full name is, office um, in the United States. And basically it's a, a dig at the Palestinians for not agreeing with the United States and Israel on a peace plan. Um, and obviously that just makes things worse, not better. Um, at the same time, the UK is looking to involve itself even more in the war in Syria. And obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you've got Iran and Russia, um, even China getting involved in Syria. So World War Three is going to start in the Middle East in Syria. And it's going to spill out from there, um, taking up like, the entire world, uh, most, most countries in the world. The cost of UK inaction in Syria is unacceptably high. And this is their excuse for getting involved in the Syrian war, um, saying basically that to, sit, to stand by and watch all these, all these deaths and all these people being displaced and the chemical weapons, allegedly, um, that they've used over there, we, we now have to get involved. So they've... Uh, sent a submarine to the Mediterranean, and obviously that is going to be for the Iranians um, and the Straits of Hormuz. And they've also sent a uh, submarine over to the Middle East to give any assistance to the US and Israel. Um, France and Germany may involve themselves as well. France, most definitely. Germany stayed out last time, but I'm getting reports that they may be involved this time, which again, it just brings in more partners, more allies, and... Um, there you have the potential for World War Three to spiral out of control. Um, probably starting from, uh, well, the reports will probably say Russia and Syria launched an attack in northeastern Syria and um, chemical weapons were used and 10,000 people died. And then this is the reason that the United States, Germany, the UK and Israel go ahead and launch strikes in Syria. Russia responds, China responds, and everything just kind of spirals out of control from there. The next story, if my computer's going to move, thinking about it. I hate when it does this. 
I'm just going to read from the little title here. Putin is ready to go all the way against the US and Syria. Okay, yeah. So, basically, we've got Putin saying that he's not going to back down in, in Syria. Uh, we've already covered this fact that the United States is telling uh, Russia and Syria not to use chemical weapons. And Russia says uh, reports of uh, British um, intelligence creating this scenario of chemical weapons usage, basically a false flag. So... The fact that Putin is not going to back down, if there is alleged chemical weapons usage, then it's not going to be the same as last time where Russia kind of kind of stepped back and, you know, let the United States, UK and France do their thing. Um, they will be heavily involved this time um, based on the reports I'm trying to read. <laughs> Sorry about this. I think maybe I've got too many tabs open. Um, as they load, I should actually shut them down because that will probably help speed it up. But while we're waiting... Uh, so I'll just read from this part here. Last month, U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton spent days... God. Sorry about this, guys. That's what I've got to work with. So last month, U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton spent four days in Israel mapping out with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israeli, gen oh, sorry, and Israeli generals a joint military strategy for destroying the Iranian presence in Syria. So... We know that Israel doesn't want Iran in Syria. We know that Iran is not leaving, so that is definitely a clash that is going to happen. We know that um, there are reports of 80,000 Shiite fighters in Syria from Iran, and uh, they may be positioned, ready to launch an offensive on Israel. Should something happen to the United States, Israel you know, won't really be able to depend on its closest um, military ally because they'll have their own problems on the homeland. Obviously, the United States is spread out around the world, so there'll still be U.S. forces in places around the world. But without the, you know, the headquarters, basically, people are just kind of fumbling around and uh, it will be easier for other countries to kind of pick off um, military, uh, what's the word, squadrons or, or groups without having to worry about reinforcements coming because everyone would be dealing with an issue, um, whether that's a tsunami, an earthquake, an EMP, whatever that is. Um, I don't know why this one is blocked, but uh, basically this one said, uh, the president, Khomeini, of Iran, urges um, the military to scare off the enemy, which is basically to scare off the United States. So that means that they'll be increasing their military weapons. Um, that may include nuclear weapons or not. But definitely ballistic missiles, they'll be using uh, ICBMs and stuff like that. So it won't just be intermediate range. They will have intercontinental ballistic missiles as well. Russia is accusing the US of dropping banned white phosphorus bombs over Syrian village. The Russian military has accused the United States of dropping white phosphorus bombs over Syria's Delazor province on Saturday. That was two days ago. The TASS and RIA news agencies reported, which the US has quickly denied, the airstrikes allegedly targeted the village of Hajin, the last major stronghold of ISIS in Syria, and resulted in fires, but there was no information regarding casualties. The bombs whose use in civilian areas is banned under the 1949 Geneva Conventions were apparently dropped by the US F-15 fighters. A Pentagon spokesman denied the US planes dropped these bombs. Commander Sean Robertson said, at this time, we do not, or we have not received any reports of any use of white phosphorus. Now, that's very different from saying we don't have white phosphorus in Syria. It's saying that it's not been used. So clearly they have access to it. Whether it's used or not, that comes down to your perspective because you'll get the reports from Russia saying one thing, you'll get the reports from the US saying the other thing, and it comes down to you to decide who you believe. In general, I take a piece from here and a piece from there and I put it together and I make my own truth. Um, that usually, for me, works out to a more accurate truth than what they're telling from one side or the other. North Korea is vowing to keep their nuclear weapons in a huge blow to Trump as World War III tensions soar. North Korea has no plans to scrap its nuclear arsenal um, in a huge blow to Donald Trump, even though, uh, I think it was just today or just yesterday, Donald Trump is thanking North Korea for not displaying their ballistic missiles at the um, North Korean, keep losing my words, at the North Korean parade um, that they did uh, yesterday, so that would have been yesterday, definitely. Um, as I said in the report that I put out yesterday, I don't think that it's a good thing that we didn't see North Korean ballistic missiles. If you can see the missiles on parade, that means they're not in location to be fired anywhere. But when they're not there, where are they? What are people? 
you know, you can't just assume that, oh, North Korea's got them stored in a warehouse, they're going for peace talks and denuclearization. That's not the that's not the idea. I think the missiles have been positioned in different places around the country, targeting Japan, targeting South Korea, and possibly even the United States if they're going to use intercontinental ballistic missiles. But definitely not something to say thank you for not displaying those missiles. What I'd be asking is I'll be going to my military chiefs and saying, okay, where were those missiles? Can we identify what they were doing at the time? Duh, duh, duh. But because Donald Trump is put in a position where he's constantly, well, I say constantly having to defend himself, but he doesn't have to defend himself like that. He chooses to do so. Um, he chooses to tout his accomplishments and it's really, it comes across as arrogant um, and at the same time misinformed. So it's very important for you Donald Trump supporters. I don't try and, you know, turn you from a Donald Trump supporter at all. But I do say it's very important for you to do your own research because a lot of the things that are said, whether it's from mainstream media or from the White House, turns out not to be completely true. And things are just tailored to suit the either the Democratic base or the Republican base. But at the same time, we need to realise that America is one country. We've got two sides of an argument, but when you're divided, it allows other people or other influences to come between you, uh, which is what is happening now. So with all that said, it's important as well to make sure that when you're hearing things about North Korea um, denuclearizing and, you know, hearing things like you can sleep peacefully now, that you do your own research and realize that it's not quite what is happening at the moment. So that's important to look out for, especially since we're five ways to five days away from the 15th of September, which is where I think uh, we'll see something happen that cause, something happens that causes Chinese tanks to move into North Korea, causes the war in Syria to kick off with Israel attacking the mosque -like structure. And obviously that brings me back to the Red Heifer because it says here that in order for the third temple to be built, Temple Mount will have to be destroyed, um, which could be what we're seeing in the IPEC Gold video, the destruction of the Temple Mount, um, and then after the this war has finished, the temple will be rebuilt. But then there's one final war after that where Jesus returns and everything is good again. And I really can't wait for that day. But at the same time, I know that with all this time that we've still got left, however much time that may be, we should be using it constructively and trying to bring more people to Jesus um, and not just saying, you know, let's go. Because there's more people to save and uh, ultimately... That's our that's our job. We're supposed to spread the word of God and you know try and bring people to to Jesus and to the Heavenly Father. So while we want Jesus to return, trust me, I do want him to return. I also would like for more people to be saved. So kind of caught in the balance at that at, at that point. Um, next report, um, as well as the red heifer possibly being assigned the. Um, Tower of Voices being assigned, the United 93 opening being assigned, and all these celebrity deaths that have been happening, um, whether they're celebrities as in music or movies, or whether they're celebrities as just in well-known, there's been quite a few famous deaths leading up into September, um, which all could be signs that we're in this time, and I take it that way. The bright green comet 21P um, is due to pass um, today. And it's making its closest approach in 72 years. And that's another thing. Everything is making its closest or it's its biggest in 70 years or 72 years or 17 years or however many years. But this year, 2018, has seen the closest approach, uh, well, Mars in opposition at its biggest and brightest. The last it has been in 15 years, I think that was. We've seen, I'm forgetting all the things we've seen. There's so many things. Um seen, uh, what was it, the asteroid Vesta, or Comet Vesta, um, that, that coming close, bright yellow star, we've got this bright green star, so it appears to me that we are definitely getting signals from the heavens. All these brightly different coloured, close approaching comets and asteroids and all these different things that we're hearing about, there will be signs in the heavens, in the moon in the stars, in the sun. That's what we're seeing right now. So, all of this is, I believe, a precursor to what's 
what's about to come. And at the same time, we've got political things going on, as I mentioned, with Donald Trump in the White House, the Bob Woodward book, Omarosa Tapes, the op-ed from the New York Times, the whisperings in the administration about the 25th Amendment. And then you come to the other side of the pond and you've got Brexit still going on. And obviously Brexit is like Britain's exit and uh, it could be played on in terms of the word usage if anything did happen to Britain that kind of, you know, decimated us or destroyed us in such a way that it would be a Brexit. There's, uh, I think it's 200 days left. So Britain's former departure from the European Union is 200 days away. Here are some of the key milestones on the road to Brexit Day. So I haven't read any of this actually, so I'm just going to have a quick scan. The government is expected to complete the publication of a series of technical papers on preparations for a no-deal Brexit. A major government commissioned a report on future arrangements for migration from the EU to the UK is expected to be published by the Migration Advisory Committee. So that's, that's talking about immigration. They're probably going to shut down the borders. Um, well, not shut them down in that way, but there'll be harsher laws in place that restrict movement. September the 19th to the 20th, Theresa May joins leaders of other of the other 27 EU states and informal European Council summit in Salzburg, Australia, or Austria, sorry, where she is expected to make the case for her checkers plan for future UK-EU relations. And this time frame still falls into a particular time frame, um, which is bringing the 21st and the 23rd and the 22nd. I don't know why I jumped the 22nd to the 23rd. Never mind. Those three days may be a translation from the iPad Goat video if... 12 is not 12, but it is 21. Then you've got B22 and you've got Psalm 23. So could be that things are extending up to that time. These are all just my thoughts. When I look at these reports, I just start thinking how they could all connect together. Um, some of them don't connect together, but are significant anyway. Yellowstone Volcano. There's been 102 earthquakes in August. 100, well, 102 tremors they're saying was rattled by more than 100 deep earthquakes in August. That's a lot of earthquakes to rattle Yellowstone, and it's all within the Yellowstone borders. I don't know if that's any more or less than um, average for, you know, August 2017 or August 2016. I'll have to do a bit more research into that, but considering the 100-foot crack that opened up there, the uplift, the steamboat guys are erupting uh, 17 times this year so far, it looks like Yellowstone is very unsettled with all the earthquakes that are going on in the Pacific Ocean as well. There's probably a, a link to those earthquakes and to Yellowstone. I, I, I really feel that would make sense. Energy travels across the plates, builds up in one place. That's where we get, well, that's where we should supposedly get the nine plus magnitude earthquake on the East Coast. Sorry, West Coast. As I said, that could be associated with Kilauea. Um, or it could be that it's just pressure building up on the plate and the big one that they've been talking about for years hits California um, and we know that the states surrounding California have prepared to receive uh, over 500,000 evacuees so they are preparing or have prepared for this event to take place um, throughout the year and if it does take place then they're you know in the right position to start, sort of do something about it so that would be like Arizona, Oregon, uh, Washington those kind of places Maybe not Oregon and Washington because they are on the West Coast themselves, but maybe they'll be less affected than California itself. Um, California as well, politically, when I think about it, um, they've got quite a few House members. I think they've got the most uh, House members from any state. And obviously, if California was taken off the map or you know severely damaged, then you, you kind of have a, a huge swing towards one side. Hawaii and Kilauea, they have lifted the mandatory evacuation for the Lani Estates. This is where the eruption kind of started and where Fisher 8 is. So Hawaiian country or county, I keep saying words wrong, Hawaiian county residents with uninsured or underinsured damage or losses as a result of the Kilauea eruptions and earthquakes have until September the 12th, 2018 to register with FEMA for disaster assistance and to apply for a low-interest disaster loan from the U.S. Small Business Administration, September the 12th. 
that is the day that I think something's going to happen with Fisher 8 and an eruption is going to come out of there and that's, probably going, and that's possibly going to affect the Helena slump and there's going to be a landslide and a tsunami and an earthquake and FEMA is giving the residents up until September the 12th to, res to register for disaster assistance and at the same time they've just lifted the warning or lifted the man mandatory evacuation people are now returning home but while they're returning home, activity has picked up at Fisher 8. Again, a small glow has been visible overnight. Now, this report is a few days back, September the 7th, so I'm a bit late on it. But there is lava returning to Fisher 8, and they've just taken off the mandatory evacuations and allowed people to return to Lalani Estates, where they would be in this Fisher 8 vicinity. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense at all, but obviously, if... They are all involved in trying to, you know, bring about some sort of catastrophic event which leads to World War III, then it does make sense. A baby volcan volcanic cone has developed within Kilauea's Fisher 8, a small globe visible overnight. Now, I'll play the video on Twitter and see. This is a video from the USGS. The cone is 10 to 13 feet. In the video, it looks really, really tiny. But, so there it is there. And you can see the glow in, in, in there. So where the lava was, there was completely no glow seen. The reports were coming out after the, um, I think it was Hurricane Lane. After Hurricane Lane passed by, the volcano kind of completely quieted down. Um, and there was no glow visible. Now, there is a glow visible. And a small cone growing within Fisher 8, which is telling you pressure is building up inside Fisher 8. And I think that it may be September the 12th when we have Hurricane Olivia passing, or well not passing, going through the Hawaiian chain of islands, going back to the 12th. So you can see there's Hurricane Olivia, maybe Tropical Storm Olivia at this point, or maybe Category 1, coming in straight through the island. So by September the 13th, where we have Hurricane Florence approaching the East Coast, Olivia's just gone through the Hawaiian Islands and obviously if an eruption happens at that point and we get the whole scenario we've been talking about that's the west coast affected and obviously Guam and all the little islands um, within the Pacific Ocean affected as well and then we come over to the 13th where the model is still showing it's not on New York so perhaps it has changed and it's not going to go to New York at all um, or it could be as I've said it's just that there's a hurricane a large hurricane going on at the same time these events happen in New York. The events obviously I've talked about in terms of earthquake, blackout, I don't know if that's going to be an EMP device, it could be blamed on the hurricane, it could be blamed on the earthquake, um, but something with no electricity lights out, that kind of scenario. Um, and then following into the 14th, we're getting Hurricane Florence coming more into uh, South Carolina. Uh, my aunt lives there, I've <laughs> I haven't spoken to her in years. Um, sent her a message saying to, you know, I mean, look out for this hurricane and, you know, maybe try and move a bit more inland if possible. And her answer was classic and it kind of made me smile. It was just a complete, it was almost like a rebuke. <laughs> she just said to me, everything is in God's hands. And that was pretty much it. And I just thought, you know what, I cannot even argue with that point. And I was so happy that she said that because it just it just said to me, if anything did happen on the really catastrophic side where things were, you know, not that I really want to speak about, but if events did happen like that, then I could be assured that my aunt would be safe in the hands of Jesus. Um, so I'm, I'm just not going to... I won't bother with her anymore. She's, she's set. Um, but for other people who, you know don't have that faith and if something did happen it would be too late for you I would suggest getting right with Jesus and if you don't then you need to keep an eye on this hurricane and decide what you're going to do um hurricane Helen Helen Helena or Helene I can't even say the name will be passing through Puerto Rico around the 14th 
15th. And obviously the 15th is when I think there's going to be a whole bunch of events happening around the world, um, leading us into World War Three quite quickly. Hurricane Isaac up here, as I mentioned, is going to be moving around. Uh, this one here, Hurricane uh, Joyce, will dissipate, but the names are significant. Blossoming, Light Torch. Um, Isaac doesn't really have a, a meaning that I can discern connected with these hurricanes, but certainly Joyce does in terms of Lord. I'll look into Isaac a little bit more. Maybe some of you guys can help me out on that front. Um, moving further down, coming up to the time where Theresa May is going to be having this um, EU meeting around the 20th, the UK is being, I don't know, under some heavy, heavy storm. This this looks drastic. Now, we're talking about submarine movement under this kind of weather. I'm guessing North, uh, Russia has advanced submarines just like um, America does, just like China does, just like the UK does. Um, they're not R North Korean diesel submarines. So where even a North Korean diesel submarine could manage to you know, slip by under the noise of such a, a storm system, a Russian submarine should have no problem. And if we do believe their reports about them managing to approach the East Coast undetected, then that would be even easier for them to do under such a storm. And then you've got these three, uh, three hurricanes kind of sitting in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, at the same time, I believe this is still... Actually, let me just take a trip back and I can tell you which hurricanes they are. So actually, Hurricane Helena is not just going to affect Puerto Rico. Looks like it's going to take some movements and head up, head up north. Doesn't look like it's moving towards the East Coast. It looks like it's moving out towards the middle of the Atlantic. But as I said, trajectories could change um, and this could could end up being something a bit more serious as well. Um, and again, that will be falling within a watch period that we do, we do have up to the 23rd of September. But this is, this is interesting. I'm going to keep an eye on this storm system to see if it, it's like a large hurricane, but it's not. The large storm system. I'll keep an eye on it to see how it develops. If it, if this model shows it, you know, not being as strong or not being there at all, I'll update. But um, at the moment, it looks like that would be enough for a whole bunch of submarines to come to come past the English Channel into the Atlantic Ocean. So keep an eye on that. And I think that's it for this first part. Of the video so that was quite a lot of information that was uh, shown there we've got to watch out for these hurricanes on the 12th with hurricane olivia approaching hawaii we've got to watch out on the 13th through to, that's that's the other thing i forgot to mention actually sorry is that going back to the 13th going, on too far up, down. going back to the 13th and hurricane florence it's not going to leave the east coast for at least four to five days you can see it is there, even in tropical storm status, from the 13th to the 19th, that's a week's worth of hurricane force or tropical force, wind and rain, flooding. So, that's bad. That's really bad, you guys. You need to make sure that you're safe. I don't want to tell people to evacuate and stuff like that because that's, that's not my position. My position is just to let you know that there is something coming and uh, you should be aware of it. Apart from that, you guys, I think the red heifer being born and being a signal of the end times, the 9-11 voices, uh, Tara voices, the subway, the 21p green comet, the, talk the talks between um, Syria, sorry, Iran, Syria, Russia and China in terms of building their alliance there the warnings coming out of the US, the UK sending over their subs for support, Germany saying they're likely to get involved. Over a hundred earthquakes at Yellowstone 
in August. There is an incredible amount of things to watch. But I feel that we are up to the task. We have been doing it for a while. And when it comes to these reports, everything just gets laid out on the table. Pull the information out there. Let you guys know exactly what's going on. So that you can think about it. Make informed decisions on what you want to do. Um, and that's it. So stay tuned for part two. You guys have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And may the Heavenly Father bless you.